um, it essentially shows that over the last, let's say, 20 years, there's been a really significant rise in cancer amongst women. But when we look at cancer amongst men, it's pretty flat. Mm -hmm. um, and this is cancer incidence by age and gender up to 49 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on why this is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few thoughts come to mind. Um, whenever I see these kinds of reports, I always make sure I look firstly at the, what are they actually measuring? So just to set the stage, this is the number of women who are being diagnosed with cancer. So not dying from cancer, but it's going up. So one, one simple explanation, although perhaps the most disappointing, could be that more women are going in for testing younger. And so we're just seeing kind of an artifact of more women are just going in sooner and they're detecting a problem that they wouldn't have otherwise detected you know, for 10 or 20 years, which is a good thing. You want to detect cancer as soon as possible. So that's the boring answer, that it could be a reflection of just more women going in for ultrasounds or MRIs or mammary scans, whereas men don't ever get tested for anything, which is why we die more from everything, possibly. But to give a more exciting answer, this is very, very likely almost entirely driven by breast cancer. Um, breast cancer is the main cancer for women um, by far. And so if I had to guess, I bet almost all of this increase in cancer incidence is because of breast cancer. Why might that be going up? I would suggest there's probably a couple instances. One, um, although people might not appreciate this, is that one of the best ways for a woman to reduce her risk of breast cancer is actually having babies. It's very well known, um, very well documented, that if a woman um, has, a fa has babies and breastfeeds, her risk of um, breast cancer goes down. So, yeah, in fact, it's very meaningful. I actually don't know um, the reasons for it. It could be the changes in estrogens during lactation phase. Now, as I'm a cell biologist, right? I like to understand a direct mechanism. And so as much as I invoke the perhaps lower rates of childbirth among women, I don't know the mechanisms, so I'm sort of loath to describe it. The mechanisms I'm very familiar with are the metabolic, um, which is if you take a breast tissue that is tumor tissue, and compare it to, like if you take a breast tumor and compare it to the normal tissue right next to it, like that it would have shared its origins with, the cancer from the breast will have seven times more insulin receptors than the normal breast tissue. So the idea of this tracking quite nicely with obesity rates going up over the past 20 years, I wouldn't say that it's the obesity per se, but I would say it's the entire metabolic milieu, which is the insulin resistance that as much as the high insulin is promoting fat cells getting bigger, that high insulin is also accelerating the growth of the tumor cells. Because again, the main, one of the main mutations in breast cancer is a seven-fold, so a seven times increase in the number of insulin receptors. And insulin wants to tell things to grow. So it's no surprise that almost every tumor that's ever been measured for having insulin receptors will have a lot more. It's basically telling its neighboring cells Insulin's going to come by and it's going to tell us all to grow. I want to grow more than you. And that's what cancer is. Cancer is growth, unregulated growth. Insulin tells things to grow. So the connection between obesity with the rising incidence of breast cancer is very, very likely a consequence of the rising incidence of insulin resistance. 